For middle distance runner must undertake a variety of training types in order to develop the necessary qualities such as speed, efficiency, aerobic capacity and lactic acid tolerance. The variety in venues and training environments is also a key component in keeping the runner mentally fresh, as the tough training schedules can be as mentally gruelling as they are physically. In this clip we will detail different training methods and philosophies that may be used by the middle distance coach. It must be remembered, particularly at school level, that not all methods can be used simultaneously and the coach will need to decide which is most suitable on the basis of the athletes he or she is working with. Six to eight weeks of long runs of up to 15 kilometres, performed two to three times per week, will cause the circulatory system to improve, increasing blood flow to the muscles. An increase in blood flow means that more oxygen will travel to the body systems. The more oxygen that is available to the athlete, the greater will be the amount of work that can be produced aerobically, without incurring lactic acid buildup. However, leg speed can be negated by an excessive focus on long runs. Including fight leg sessions into this period of training will assist in maintaining aerobic gains without damaging speed qualities. Long runs are a core component of all middle distance programs, as Bruce Scriven explains. As far as endurance is concerned, it's obviously really important as the base work for all middle distance running. Um, the difficulty will be fitting it in over a period of time so that you can balance the other things that are needed in a middle distance program, such as your lactic training, uh, your interval work, your fart lek and your speed work. As far as the endurance work's concerned, most people will ask how long should the long run be? And I very much argue that that depends on the maturity level of the athlete. Um, you know, probably if you're looking at year eight and nine, kids at school, 35 to 40 minutes. But uh, a mature athlete, of course, um, will probably run an hour and a half as their long run or even more. Tempo runs are timed runs totalling about 12 minutes for school-aged athletes. These are slower than race pace, but faster than long, slow runs. Tempo runs build anaerobic and aerobic endurance. The cardiovascular system will not be as well trained compared to doing long runs only, but good results can be obtained by using this training method. Rather than maximum pace, these types of runs are conducted at a controlled pace, which is maintained by monitoring either heart rate or times recorded for the distances. The idea is to run just below anaerobic threshold, or the intensity at which lactic acid begins to accumulate. At this sub-maximum pace, the athlete should be able to concentrate on rhythm and good running form. The fartlek can be a combination of jogging, sprinting, striding, uphill and downhill running. The tempo of the run is changed while a certain distance is covered. The fart leg is usually time based and the athlete will run continuously for a set time of between 15 to 30 minutes, surging for periods ranging from 20 seconds to several minutes. This type of training covers every energy system. It also gives the athlete the freedom and change of pace during a run that is so vital to middle distance training. Interval training consists of running repeats of a certain distance such as 400, 300 and 200 metres and taking a timed rest after each run. The rest may be brief, such as 15 to 30 seconds or longer, depending on the aim of the session. The runs are usually done a little faster than race pace. This method of training can be tailored to suit athletes of all ability levels, as the distance and recovery times can be set for the strongest and weakest runners in the squad. Interval training will develop speed endurance and anaerobic conditioning. Speed endurance uh, for the middle distance school athlete is most important. We're talking about doing repetition 200s at race pace or faster. Um, getting the body used to, um, to running at the necessary speed under duress and repeating it. Very, very important. So we, we might be looking at um, two sets of four times 200. Uh, with a turn of meter jog between or a jog across the, the oval in between. We might be looking at six times 300 with two or three minutes in between. Uh, the idea being, uh, um, as I said earlier, at race pace or quicker. Repetition training looks very similar to interval training, 
but is usually a longer distance, generally anywhere from 400 to 1600 metres. The emphasis is on speed and setting a goal pace and developing anaerobic endurance. The rest between efforts may be longer, but again this will depend on the aim of the session. It is vital to include speed in any middle distance training program, especially the 800 metres. The distance covered for each sprint may be anything from 60 to 200 metres. The percentage of effort should be kept at 80 to 90 per cent and the recovery should be an easy walk back to the original starting point. A strong emphasis on technique should be maintained in all repetitions. The speed component of middle distance is also very important. Um, it's necessary to, to not lose uh, an athlete's natural speed by doing too much long running um, or by burying them by doing too much lactic acid training or interval training um, and so a speed session can also be a lot of fun for kids. Um, they might uh, run six times 60 metres or they might do what we call ins and outs which are 40 metres fast, 40 easy, 40 fast, that sort of thing um, and you work on obviously on their form uh, making sure that their arm carriage is correct, there's some knee lift, everything's pointing forward um, and they tend to really enjoy those training sessions. Strength and power conditioning is also important in middle distance running. These qualities can be developed indirectly by running hills, fartlek and long interval training. More advanced athletes may undertake more specific strength and power work such as gym-based circuits or even plyometric sessions, although these will not usually be necessary for school-level athletes. Strength and power conditioning, obviously important for the mature athlete and used wisely can be advantageous for, uh, for uh, younger athletes. The problem again is fitting everything into a week's program, um, having the right people teaching the right techniques uh, what we tend to do more with, with um, school athletes is, is allow hill work and so on to do that, um, that sort of base. A component which is often overlooked in distance training is running technique, which the runner can improve with specific drills and by trying to think about and maintain correct form, even during intense efforts in training. For further information refer to the separate clip on running technique development. Athletes should be taught to become as economic as they possibly can. Uh, I tend to talk about having things pointing in the right direction. So from feet up, um, obviously you want to be moving forward. And we talk a lot about um, running tall. We talk a lot about uh, good arm carriage, getting some drive. We talk a lot about um, relaxing getting the athlete to run relaxed. Now, a lot of coaches will say that you become more economic by running more and I'll certainly agree with that. I think every individual is different so that you find a way to become more efficient but certainly a, a coach should be able to help an athlete develop the right techniques uh, particularly from a young age. Pace judgment is crucial to successful middle distance running and can be developed by using a stopwatch in training to help achieve consistent efforts. By regularly performing specific distances in set time periods, the athlete will develop an intrinsic sense of their speed and hence their competitive pace judgment will improve. We develop pace uh, judgment by, by actually practicing it and a fair amount of our training will be, will be involved in setting times for intervals. So again, if it might be we're running six times 200, um, the, the goal pace, uh, the race pace is to be, say, two minutes. Obviously, you want to be running 200 metres at 30 seconds. And so we'll practise that. Um, and uh, I consider it really important. Too often we see athletes go out crazily and blow up. Um, too often we see the opposite where um, an athlete who hasn't learnt pace judgement will start far too slowly and, um, and have too much left at the end, come storming home. Tactics or race positioning should be practised in group situations during training. Various simulated race situations can be developed by the coach, 
for athletes may work on tactics and positioning. The race tactics again are, are really important and, and I think uh, experience for young athletes is, um, is of paramount importance and I guess the real difficulty is finding enough races for these kids in the beginning for them to learn how to race. Obviously it's connected to pace judgment and I will tend to tell a young athlete that all right if he's running an 800 he's trying to run 2.6 as his first time let's get round about 63 seconds for the first 400 let's try and get it even and 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 basically work from there individual differences come into it some a lot of kids have the bravado to go out and lead and I never like to knock that um, other athletes are far more comfortable holding back and, and coming home. But again, I think pace judgment is, is really important. The other thing there is, is um, teaching young athletes to run in packs. Uh, and if you've got a good training group, that's uh, quite an easy thing to do. You can take it in turns to lead. You can get somebody sitting second or third on the rails with three or four people around them and say, now you have to get out at the very next opportunity. Uh, so those things can be practised and, and should be practised. Periodisation of training involves the planning of training to ensure that the athlete has peaked for important competitions. However, in the school athletic calendar the training period is quite compressed, so the influence of periodisation is not as pronounced as it is for senior athletes. Periodisation at uh, the school level is very difficult, obviously. Um, most athletes only have a short period of training time. So it's not really relevant at the school level. Uh, it can be, given that some athletes will do a cross-country season, uh, which they'll use as their base, and uh, that will lead fairly naturally into their track season. Um, certainly at elite level, period, periodisation is uh, very, very important. We tend to have, in Australia, the handicap almost of trying to do two seasons, doing a double periodised year. Um, we have the requirement to run the domestic season but then our uh, elite athletes need to go to Europe and, and other overseas places to compete um, and that makes it difficult. Really uh, it's the planning of the year and allowing for a bit of time off perhaps, um, allowing for a, a, a build up, um, allowing for uh, a peaking period and so um, really it is far more relevant to the international athlete. Hill training is an effective way of training for middle distance running and has been used by almost every successful runner. Hills can play a vital part in the preparation for middle distance running. The hill used should be a gradual incline allowing for the athlete to maintain good technique and rhythm. This is an intense form of training and should be included in the program only once a week. Hill training provides us with a number of advantages. Obviously, um, you can manipulate hills to either be repetition ones or where you roll hills. If you're doing repetition hills, um, probably one small warning, just not coming down the hill too fast. Uh, it can be a bit dangerous uh, lower leg wise. But you can, of course, combine uh, your interval training with hill training so that um, I witnessed in Arkansas earlier this year and 400 metre rep training being done. Um, so the, the, the repetitions were happening and the good solid hit out from the hills. And I'd also emphasise with the hills that it tends to be very good for form, particularly if you've got a nice grass um, uh, hill. You, can, you will notice that the athletes tend to get their arms up and make good use of them. It's a whole lot of advantages from, you know, that can be found by uh, using hills. Although many types of training have been outlined, a coach would seldom have the athlete performing all of these in a single training week. The selection of the different types of running sessions should be dependent upon the training phase, the level of the athlete and the proximity to competitive races. Middle distance coach Bruce Scriven outlines a typical training week for school aged athletes. I guess typically um, athletes would do three training sessions and that would fit in quite nicely with uh, one of my basic beliefs which is hard day, easy day. Um, and if I, was, if I was 
to provide three training sessions for the week, I would do one of them being a fartlek, and an example there would perhaps be four or five times three minutes with a minute to a minute and a half easy jog between. And the other two days, given the compressed uh, program, would need to be on the track and one of them would be, earlier in the week, would be longer intervals. Might be, um, you know, five or six times 400 and uh, with an interval perhaps of walk back in between or jog 200 metres in between, depending on the age of the athlete and the level of the athlete. Uh, and the other one would perhaps be more concentrated on speed, so uh, typically 200 metre reps, um, and perhaps even beginning with four or five times 60 metres just to get the speed up and going uh, and then rolling into the 200 reps with uh, perhaps a 100 metre walk and then a 100 metre jog in between. Also important when dealing with school level athletes is to take into consideration other sports and activities in which they may be involved. This is essential when planning the training program to minimise the risk of injury and overtraining. I think that uh, because the kids do so many sports and um, basketball, netball, those sorts of sports can be pretty tough on lower legs. Um, I, guess, I guess the key to it in a way is to ask the athletes to be honest. You know, how are your legs? Are you doing the right um, warm downs? Are you icing? Are you you know, doing the things that might be preventative before they happen. Um, most, most of us as coaches and teachers have been in the position where we get to our major sports day and we're without a star or two and we hate it. And it's very, very important to try and, um, and prevent that from happening.